going, everybody? My name is Elprince, and welcome back to yet another reaction video. Today, I got another history video, guys. It's by Simple History. And I've been watching a lot of history videos the last couple of months. So I figured I'd do a little bit more of a deeper dive into history that I have little to any information on. And this one caught my attention. It's the Soviet-Afghan War, which raved raged on from, I think it was 1981 to the fall of the Soviet Union 10 years later. Now, I know the Soviet Union lost the war, but I don't know all the elements that led up to it, whether it be the economic collapse, the military coup at the end of, not the military, the communist coup to try and save the Soviet Union. But I figured I'd take a look into this because I know absolutely nothing about it. So we're just going to dive right into this video, no questions asked. And we're going to start in three, two, one. Also, I had to skip ahead about a minute into the video because the first minute was a sponsorship. So that's why if in a second you're going to see a minute skipped in. So just want to let you know. So three, two, one, go. Spetsnaz. Oh, that's Soviet loud. Soviet Afghanistan war. 1979 to 19... Oh, 1979. I, I was off by two years. 89. On the 27th of December 1979, the Soviet 40th Army invaded Afghanistan with the intention of propping up the communist government of the People's Democratic Party of Afghanistan against a growing insurgency. At the time, the U.S. had been making progress in the Middle East to Moscow's dismay. The U.S. had succeeded in courting Egypt, Israel, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, and others. On the back of this, the Soviet Union feared the loss of its communist proxy in Afghanistan. By the time the Soviet forces had entered the region, they had deployed two airborne assault... So that's why the Soviets invaded. They were trying to save the communist regime that was there at the time from collapsing. I did not know that. Also, if I'm very quiet when it comes to certain history videos, it's because I'm trying to soak in the information I'm being told and trying to analyze it before saying something. So that's why I'm very quiet. That's why I don't really talk that much because I'm like trying not to like offend people's histories. It's stuff like that. I'm trying to just grasp and understand. That's why I got people commenting on some other recent history videos of, me, of them explaining things to me, which I very much enjoy the explanation from you guys. And if you guys want to see other videos, stuff like this in the future, Comment below. That's what the comment section is for. <laughs> but it is really thankful to have that information, though, because it makes me have a better understanding of, like, what these people do, what their religions are like. If you're just understanding, pretty much. Gates, 180 sorties of Anatov-12 and Anatov-22 transport aircraft, 100 combat aircraft, and a great number of troops to secure the Bagram Air Base 40 miles north of Kabul. Accompanying these initial forces were paratroopers and Spetsnaz. The Spetsnaz were the Soviet Special Forces, an elite Soviet tactical force known for their effectiveness, ferocity, and skill. During the Cold War, there was a veil of secrecy over the structure of these units and their purpose, leading to their almost legendary status in the West. Often, Spetsnaz... Honestly, are this is the first time I'm hearing about Spetsnaz. Not gonna lie, even though I've been doing a lot of research lately into the Soviet Union, I have not... Heard of Spetsnaz. Of his army commando units. In reality, however, Spetsnaz are not a specific tactical unit, but a more general clandestine force which were deployed at the behest of the Soviet intelligence security services for special missions. The most huh. notorious were naturally those specialized in reconnaissance, commando, and special operations. There were several Spetsnaz units in the Soviet Union. The GRU Spetsnaz. These were and continue to be the special forces of the Russian Armed Forces Military Intelligence Directorate. The GRU Spetsnaz huh. were formed in 1949 with the task to carry out reconnaissance and sabotage activity behind enemy lines. GRU Spetsnaz were assigned to units of the ground forces. The GRU VMF Spetsnaz formed in 19. I did not realize there were so many different forms of Spetsnaz. Did not know that. 41, they were another special formation of the military intelligence assigned to the Soviet Navy. The KGB Spetsnaz, also known as Alpha. Set up in 1974 by the KGB's 8th Directorate in charge of surveillance, according to one contemporary report in the Washington Post from 1986, Department 8 had been connected with assassinations, kidnappings, sabotage, and other direct action operations for decades. And finally, there was the KGB SVR Spetsnaz, also known as Vempel. 
Another KGB unit set up in 1979 by the first main director in charge of foreign affairs. Their role was to conduct military actions abroad. The GRU and KGB picked only the best for these elite units. Recruits were primarily picked for their intelligence and physical skills, as well as by their motivation to fight unequivocally for their country. Every military district had a Spetsnaz Brigade, and their headquarters served as recruitment centers for special operation units. Huh. Across the breadth of the Soviet Union were centers for the recruitment of future Spetsnaz soldiers. Young men were conscripted from high schools, sports clubs, and colleges, and those that showed the special physical and mental aptitude were designated Spetsnaz. During the Afghan campaign, Soviet military commanders focused on recruiting young men from Muslim regions of the Soviet Union. Young men from Central Asian republics were suited to infiltration and counterinsurgency. These recruits practiced the same religion, shared similar conservative social backgrounds, and most importantly, many of these young men spoke Farsi. The involvement of the Spetsnaz began when the Soviet command had realized that mechanized infantry units were not effective against the Mujahideen guerrilla tactics. Spetsnaz, the USSR's elite forces, were seen as a unit capable of fighting this new enemy. However, even the Spetsnaz initially lacked the mountain warfare training necessary for the Mujahideen and had to adapt to new challenges. Standard right, Spetsnaz essentially, it was guerrilla warfare. You have to fight your enemy on their ter terrain in like the mountains and such towns. It, it was guerrilla warfare. That's one of the reasons why wars like that don't go too well. Training was designed to engender the extreme opponent. mental and psychological fitness. Or the one Superb invading, rather. physical fitness was achieved through intense exercise and forced marches in full combat equipment. The mental strength was acquired from frequent bullying and beatings from senior NCOs and officers. Spetsnaz forces also had to master elite combat skills. They had to be exceptional marksmen, skillful in operating a variety of weapons and explosives. Yeah, dragging off. Recruits also had to master hand-to-hand -hand combat. Allegedly, Spetsnaz forces practiced hand-to-hand -hand combat skills through 12-minute freestyle sparring matches against three opponents. The rest of the program consisted of airborne training, mountain climbing, rappelling, medical training, and using modern means of radio communication. Also, according to one contemporary Pentagon report, Spetsnaz forces were fluent in one or more foreign languages. Wow. Basic training lasted on average for two months. Additionally, specialized training programs lasted for three to four years. Less than 10% of selected troops managed to complete the entire program. For service in Afghanistan, Spetsnaz were encouraged to adapt their training to the conditions of the campaign, which would include long-range patrols, reconnaissance exercises, ambushes, and raids. In order to familiarize themselves with the terrain in Afghanistan, they were dropped by helicopters in the middle of the mountains. And after they accomplished their training missions, they had to find their own way back to base by themselves. Wow. Kind of just dropped them where they were. That is a dragon off. <laughs> I was like, that, I was like that, that rifle looked very familiar, and I couldn't tell because it was too zoomed in. But yeah, they're just leaving them in the middle of nowhere and essentially telling them, to, hey, find your way back to home. Kind of messed up way of training, but I don't know if any other military today does that. I don't, I don't think they do, but... I could be very wrong because I don't know the rest of the world. Afghanistan was a new experience for Spetsnaz, and it also acted as a testing site for new Soviet weapons. Being an elite unit, Spetsnaz were equipped with the most advanced weapons. Spetsnaz were armed with a then new 5.45mm AKS-74 assault rifle equipped with a GP-25 underbarrel grenade launcher. As these were still in an experimental phase, there were many situations in which they malfunctioned. For that Ooh. reason, Spetsnaz also used standard 7.62mm AK-47 assault rifles. Other infantry weapons used were standard Soviet weapons including RPK light machine guns, DSHK heavy machine guns, SVD sniper rifles, and AGS-17 automatic grenade launchers. Special AKMS assault rifles with short barrels and silencers were used for stealth operations. Huh. Spetsnaz forces also used the six-round PSS silent pistol for reconnaissance and assassination That's a weird, missions. weird, dinky little pistol. The pistol was effective at 82 feet and was effective in suppressing sound. Unlike other silence pistols, the PSS was silenced using a sealed cartridge system. For reconnaissance missions, Spetsnaz used equipment that were products of the latest Soviet technology. For the first time, Spetsnaz used gadgets like laser rangefinders, night binoculars, and night vision goggles. 
huh. for sabotage operations, Spetsnaz used equipment unavailable to standard troops. These included radio-controlled explosives. Once set, it could be activated by command posts at distances away of 1,240 miles. The greatest improvements were made by means of tactical communication. Spetsnaz soldiers in Afghanistan were equipped with the latest radio devices that enabled constant communication with commands at large distances. Advanced weaponry and equipment were the only thing that separated Spetsnaz from the rest of the army in their appearance. Spetsnaz didn't have their own distinct military uniform, but were using uniforms of the unit they were assigned to. They looked exactly Ow. as any other soldier in order to keep their existence in operation. I was going to say, throughout this whole video, they looked very much like regular soldiers. That nah, makes sense. There were some modern rucksacks, boots, and loading equipment that were deployed, but these were very scarce. The role of Spetsnaz in Afghanistan was not in accordance to their original mission. They were sent there to reinforce the standard units who had difficulty fighting the guerrilla forces in the Afghanistan mountain regions. In Afghanistan, Spetsnaz were deployed for a variety of operations. The invasion of Afghanistan began with a Spetsnaz operation. This was the famous Operation Storm 333, with the objective to assassinate Afghan President Hafizullah Amin in order to install a puppet government. On December 27, 1979, GRU and KGB Spetsnaz teams Thunder, Rom, and Zenith assaulted Tajabek Palace dressed in Afghan uniforms. The majority of the Spetsnaz soldiers were Tajiks and Uzbeks who spoke Farsi. Spetsnaz swiftly overcame the resistance of the President's guard, located the President, and killed him. At the same time, oh. other Spetsnaz teams secured key government and military centers in Kabul, including the airport. The effectiveness of Spetsnaz units in the operation resulted in minimal casualties. In the first few years of the war, Spetsnaz were primarily engaged in the protection of their military bases and for securing bridgeheads. Initially, Spetsnaz forces were used to reinforce the standard Soviet 40th Army and Afghan forces combating the Mujahideen. As fighting continued, Soviet command realized that their standard mechanized infantry units were not capable of combating the Mujahideen guerrilla tactics and it became necessary to engage Spetsnaz on counterinsurgency operations. Reconnaissance was a key focus for Spetsnaz forces in Afghanistan. Spetsnaz were tasked with locating insurgents bases, ammunition stores, and command centers, often covering distances of up to 150 kilometers per day. Once these were located, Spetsnaz would usually call for reinforcements in the way of airstrikes. Spetsnaz were also engaged in combat operations. One of their most notable assault operations happened in early March 1986. With the help of mechanized infantry, the D-30 artillery battalion, MI-8 and MI-24 helicopters, and Su-25 aircrafts, Spetsnaz attacked and seized Mujahideen weapon and ammunition caches at the Sadigar Canyon. One key tactic of the Spetsnaz in combating the Mujahideen was to cut their supply lines from neighboring countries to Afghanistan, including Pakistan. The tactic was to drop Spetsnaz detachments deep into Mujahideen territory with MI-8 helicopters where they would then set up one or more ambushes along the supply routes. Often, Spetsnaz limited their engagement, locating the enemy caravan after which they would call in an airstrike by MI-8 helicopters. On several occasions, the Spetsnaz would finish the job themselves by organizing an ambush. One such occasion was at the Yatpe Mountain Pass. Spetsnaz prepared an ambush for the Mujahideen caravan on August 30, 1987. After they let the Vanguard patrol pass, they attacked the caravan that followed. Covered by night, Spetsnaz used flares to illuminate the enemy and in just a few minutes had killed the enemy forces. FIM-92 wow. and Stinger missiles acquired by the Mujahideen in 1986 became the key target for Spetsnaz reconnaissance teams. The devastating effect of Stinger missiles rendered them a significant threat to the Soviet forces, and the Soviets rallied frantically to locate and eliminate as many launchers as they could. The Spetsnaz were an effective counterinsurgency force against the Mujahideen during the Soviet-Afghan conflict, much more so than the standard Soviet forces. However, while Spetsnaz were successful in their missions in Afghanistan, their involvement in the country ended in February 1989, when the last contingent of Soviet soldiers withdrew from Afghanistan. Huh. Wow. Okay, so now I'm know a little bit about Soviet Afghan war, but I need to do another look into it. Maybe the armature and hi historian has a video on it that I could find. I'll have to look at him because I've been watching a lot of his videos lately. Um, but that gave me a rundown basically of one of the Soviet Union's military operation, military groups. So, 
that gives me a little bit more of an insight of how they were operated back then. But that only raised more questions. I'll have to look again into another history video about the entire conflict of the Soviet-Afghan war in the future. So with that being said, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's reaction video. Please like and subscribe all stuff, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.